All right, another day, another problem. Coin change. Uh, it's uh, another classic dynamic programming problem, lead code medium. This one's on lead code, unlike the knapsack one that I just did uh, spend the last three days doing. And it's not too bad. Uh, I will, let's get to it. So we have an integer total and a list of integers coins and the variable coins holds a list of coin denominations and total is the total amount of money. Now we have to find the minimum, the minimum number of coins that can make up the total amount by using any combination of the coins. With the amount can be made up, return negative one. With the total amount is zero, return, return zero. And this diagram makes it very plain. So you have a total of seven, you have these coins. What's the minimum amount we can get, we can combine to make seven? And the answer here is two, because uh, you just take four and three. Uh, and now they also say like each coin is infinite in amount, right? It's not like we have only one coin of one or one coin of three or one coin of four or one, or one coin of five. We have as many as we need to get to this total. So we can say five plus one plus one, that would give us seven. We can say four plus three, which is, ends up being the right one, because that's better than five plus one plus one. You, you get me? You feel me? All right. And then we have, in this case, total is four. We have t coins uh, two a piece. So the best we can do is uh, very straightforward. Two plus two. Here we have five. There is no way we can use the minimum of five to get to four. So we return negative one. In this case, our total, what we're trying to get to is zero. So there's, we don't need any coins. So just return zero. Well, that's it. Uh, now, as usual, there, there's a naive solution, right? There's a recursive solution and there's an iterative solution to this problem. I'm not going to step into the naive, so the naive approach right now. Uh, you can probably find out online. Just for the sake of the length of the video, we're going to go straight into the optimized pattern. And they note here how it's, it looks kind of, like, it's kind of like a greedy algorithm thing, but not really. And you can pause and read that at your own leisure. However, uh, it has sub problems, right? Repeating sub problems. And it can be represented by this tree. And when you also see a tree of this nature, I mean, recursion, a function call in itself should come to mind. But in this case, I found the recursive solution harder to think about. And so I'm not going to get into it. Again, you can, they explain all of that here, right? How they come, they got their recursive solution and you can pause digest the whole thing right look at the code and i'll put this code in the description as well this is the final solution but i want to focus on the iterative approach because it's a lot shorter because um this is the this is the recursive approach right so long so much stuff so much text then you have uh oh, not that guy You have this this guy, the iterative one, which is so much cleaner, so much nicer, and builds on what we what we learned in the last video, where our objective for any given any given coin uh, total is to build up the sub problems. And what is a sub problem? A sub problem is okay. In the original example that they gave. Um, a total is seven. So if we, the thing is, the thing is if we find, if we build up total from zero up to seven, the solutions when the total is zero, for this, for this, this set of coins, the solutions when the total is one from zero to one to two to three to four to five to six to seven, those solutions before seven. So assuming over oh, our goal was one here, or our goal was two or three or four. Those solutions can help us get to that final solution of it being seven, right? That final uh, answer of it being seven. So that's what we do with code. And I think it's worth stepping through with the, the debugger. All right, so this is the solution, very simple, straight to the point. See, not a whole lot going on and it works and it gives uh, the uh, optimal time and space complexity. So very quickly, I'm going to just put a few breakpoints here. Put one here, uh, put one breakpoint here, here, and here. And then uh, one over here. Yeah, we don't really need one here. Okay, so 
start the algorithm hi this guy and I want you to pay attention to what is going on so for our first instance uh, we have these coins one three four and five just like in the diagram uh, this diagram one three four and five with a total of seven we know the answer is two because I would get that by saying four four plus three now in this solution right remember that okay if the total is less than one so if our aim is zero right there's no amount where you can arrange the coins to get zero so it returns zero and that's what this condition is this first condition is and next we're gonna create a counter right and it goes from it goes up until uh, let's put one of these here right and i'm filling it with a with a maximum value of some kind so it goes from zero to seven as you can see down here uh, hopefully this is shouldn't i shouldn't be blocking this my face shouldn't be blocking this so as you can see it goes from zero to seven and then each of these represent the optimal combination we can have up until we get to seven so the optimal combination we can have when we're at zero is zero so i just said that Im immediately right because again i've already done that here and now i'm going to loop for every coin for every single coin for every single one of these coins from one three four and five and for each of those, I'm going to loop again, but this time from whatever coin I'm currency I'm iterating on. So if it's one, it's good. J is going to start from one. If I'm at three, J is going to start from three. So far, J is less than uh, the total plus one. Okay. Keep that in mind. And what I'm going to do each time is to check, okay, what's the minimum between what I've stored before, right? Have I seen this answer before, right? Or am i going to consider adding this coin so if i've seen the answer this uh combination before that translates to me not adding that combination i believe i believe that's what it is and if i whichever is better between if i've seen this before or if i include that particular coin that particular coin i'm considering and that's what determines what what, what i add to this counter here as the best uh, approach for that sort of problem. So let's let's step through the code. So for j of one, so assuming we our total was one, right? In this case, that's what j means. Assuming our total is one, um, what's the best thing we can get here? So j is index at one. Index at one. That's counter j. Index at one is. Is. Uh, well, this huge number, this terribly huge number. So what is smaller between this terribly, terribly huge number or J minus, let me write, let me put that in a watch variable for you real quick. Or countering index at zero plus one. So countering index at zero, remember we set that already to zero plus one. So that's going to give us one. So there is, so counter J and index at J, index at one is now going to be set to one. And what does that translate to? So it's like, it's saying when J was one, yeah, when the total amount that originally is seven, when it was one, and we were considering a scenario where we only have this one coin to add, what was the minimum amount that we can use to get to one? And that answer is one, okay? So that's what we do by looping through all the coins here. In this line we take them one by one so for the total of one we're building up to seven but assuming we could we were looking for one like a total of one and we only had one coin how many what's the minimum amount of coins we need to get to have one and that's what is being translated here as one and we keep going so i right i is still at zero so it's still considering this first coin Right, we're still assuming. Okay, assuming we have only this coin, right? But now we have a total of two we want to get. Yeah, what's the minimum number of coins we can use? And just off the top of my head, we know that that is two, right? Assuming we have a coin of denomination one, and our total is two, what's the minimum amount of those coins that we need? And we're going to get two. And this computation is important, and it's a standard pattern. It even transfers over from the knapsack. Similar, if you look at all that video, the last very last. The last two videos 
you will see that this pattern is not too hard to arrive at, right? Once you understand that concept of building up, using solve problems to get the total, the final, final, final answer. And so that's going to update to two, as you can see here in the debugger, right? Next, we're still evaluating, oh, if we had only this coin, but now we had a space of three, right? That's just going to keep going, right? To three, four, and everything's just going to update because we're, again, we only have one coin. We're assuming we only have one coin and then the space is adjusting from zero up until its final space of seven, assuming we only had one coin. So next, we're going to bring in the second coin and that's when I changes to one, which is three and st start populating this, this counter again. So in this case, uh, we, I is one. So J is going to start from th three. And what does that mean? You notice that the J changed just now. What does that mean? It means uh, for when we're considering this coin, right? This coin that is three. If the capacity is less than three, we don't change anything because it, it can't fit. We just use what was there before. Okay. If it's less than three, three can't, can't fit in anyway. So uh, we're trying to get to, in that case, three, because it started up at, at, at three. I think there's even a way I can, oh no, I can't go back. Uh, you don't have that time travel debugging in JavaScript, but feel free to download this code, put your own breakpoints and look into inspect things. And you'll find that it, that it actually, this is the more easier to grasp uh, solution. Um, in fact, I'm going to put a breakpoint here just so I always know when it's changing. And so on. So three then keeps going. The best option when we, okay, assuming we had a space of six, right? Assuming total was six and we would, could only evaluate these two coins. What's the best we can do? You do, you would know intuitively that, oh, that's three plus three, right? That's the best we can do. Or you can do three plus one plus one plus one plus one or one plus one plus one plus one, which was better than what was there before. Cause what was there before, if you remember was six, right? Cause we were evaluating only one coin and the only way to get it, get to it was six. And then we're going to get down to this last one. This is uh, at seven and see what it changes to. So that changes to three, which of course we know is going to be three plus three plus one. Okay. So now next we're going to evaluate four, right? This next one, four, I is going to change again. Okay. And now let me just set another expression here for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so now we're evaluating the four, a coin of four, right? And what does that look like? Stepping through the code, you notice it started from here, right? Because, okay, we want four things. There's, if we have only one coin of four, that, that one is going to be the best. And then for five, it's two. Then no change for six, right? But a change for seven. So now it's two for seven. And then finally, we get to the last I, which is three, the big boss, right? The five. And step through it again. And we're done. We landed at two. So now if, if this didn't get changed, right? Remember, we set it to the max value in JavaScript. Then it means there's no way with the coins. So just return negative one. But that's not the case. In, in this case, we actually have an answer. So count index at seven. It's going to give us two. And that is the correct answer. Then we move to the next problem. So feel free to step through this in your own time. And uh, what is going to happen now, we can look at the time complexity. And um, so basically that's n times n. So n where n is uh, the total and m is the number of coins. So that's the time complexity. It grows with uh, that, com that multiplication, that value. And uh, the space complexity is O of n, right? n is the total because if you remember, we were storing, we initialized this, right, total. So it grows linearly with the, the total that we're after. And that's all to this problem. Uh, see, you, see you again. Ciao.